alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most beneficent. All praise are due to Allah the Almighty, of whom we ask to send his peace and blessings upon his final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is his final messenger and apostle, and so on. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to Huda TV's new series, a new ultimate program of which I know for a fact will benefit many Muslims around the world, even non-Muslims, because all of us are sharing one trait, sadly, that we are suffering a worldly pandemic, even more dangerous than coronavirus. And to what extent am I referring to? Because coronavirus is limited to like a certain number of people per each and every country. But what if I told you that the following problem is going to be more threatening and the numbers are really shocking. Brothers and sisters, we are referring to pornographic addiction, yes. And this is a matter of which we need, as Muslims throughout the world, we need to have a stand for it. Such corporates, such companies, such foul acts that are being widespread around the internet, television, social media, all of this has got to stop. And only the believers will know things for its reality. Now, brothers and sisters, we have prepared a full module by the grace of Allah the Almighty. Now, we are not going to merely tell you what is halal and what is haram. We already know that pornography is haram. That's not the unique thing we're going to be speaking about these days, inshallah. What we're going to be journeying in, God willing, is by having the experts to speak about such matters with realistic and gradual systems to break free from these undesired habits and by the will of Allah the Almighty together as we abide by the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, by understanding who we are we will be able to tackle such addictions protect our children would you want your children to be seeing or like even viewing such things on their laptops on their smartphones which is not a really a smart move so may Allah protect us all. Brothers and sisters, by the grace of Allah, we are going to be joined by our brother and beloved Mr. Wa'al Ibrahim, who is the co-founder of Aware Academy. MashaAllah, he's also a certified life coach and he's a member of the Society for the Advancement of Sexual Health. He holds a bachelor's degree in Islamic studies and he's a student's counselor in the Australian Islamic University MashaAllah, we can benefit from him a lot by the grace of Allah. And one more thing, he's also authored a book which is called Change, which is a motivational system from breaking free from undesirable habits. So we welcome Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother Wa'il. How are you, sir? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother Mustafa. Jazakumullah khairan for the invitation. Just a quick correction, inshallah ta'ala. It's the Australian Islamic College. It's a high school in, in Perth, Australia, not a university. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah Thank bless you, you for brother. the introduction. May Allah bless you, sir. And uh, definitely, Amen. regardless if it's a university or college, uh, mashallah, what you are doing and what you... I've actually followed uh, the series that uh, you have, mashallah, conducted. Really beneficial. And at first, I expected to see that it was only a Muslim brother saying halal or haram, and that's it. No, I found statistical numbers, researches, and even the titles were so eye-grabbing. I was like, mashallah, we can truly benefit by the grace of Allah from this wonderful brother. Allahumma barik lak. Jazakallahu khairan. And, and as, as you just said in the introduction regarding the halal and haram part, like if we look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and how he dealt with people who actually suffered from undesirable activities, like the man who came to the Prophet Sallallahu and actually uh, told him or asked him to allow him to commit adultery. The Prophet Sallallahu could have easily actually tell him it's haram, don't you know the Quran, don't you know it's haram and so on and so forth. But the Prophet Sallallahu realized that the man was actually struggling with such addiction and as a result the Prophet ﷺ kept on asking questions to open doors for him and to facilitate ways for him to recover and as a result the man never returned to his sin again so it's it's uh, it's not a matter of saying to people halal and haram which is of course the job and the uh, the responsibility of people of knowledge but also we need to 
uh, uh, facilitate a path or a strategy for those who are struggling in silence behind the screens. MashaAllah, beautifully said, may Allah bless you. And truly what I personally benefited from this is that we know we had a talk earlier and if you remember, we started saying that in the future, when I have a daughter or a son, that we would love to put a plan and to avoid such problems. And such was the methodology of uh, Sayyiduna Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, is that he would uh, abstain or prohibit al-fitna before it took place in the first place. Won't you agree with that? Absolutely, brother. And, and alhamdulillah, I, I, uh, I, I, I had... Uh, an agreement with my kids like i'm gonna give you you know devices but hey i'm i'm the boss i'm, I'm the i'm the man who bought those phones so it's <laughs> they are still mine all right so you have to follow my lead my my rules and so we have those rules like 30 minutes every week and three hours during the uh, uh sorry 30 minutes during weekdays and school days and uh three hours during weekends and so on and we have to use them in specific locations where everyone can actually have access to those devices, no passcodes that are unknown. Everyone has the same password and so on. So we will talk in details about uh, uh, how to handle children in the digital age, in the technology uh, time that we are living in uh, at, at this current state. Yeah. That is perfectly, of course, like I can not really encourage it any more than I am right now. But let us talk about particular points, God willing, because we have a lot to discuss throughout the upcoming episodes, inshallah. So we're going to be talking today about what is porn addiction. And uh, mashallah, we can always start gradually from identifying it until we reach the solutions and so on. So in your words, uh, Mr. Wa'el, can you kindly like clarify what is porn addiction? Jazakallah khair. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So to begin with, inshallah, we need to, to understand what is addiction first. Like, what is addiction? Uh, let us put pornography aside for, for a minute. Addiction itself is, is classified and defined by experts like Dr. Patrick Carnes, for example, or Dr. Michael Kohar. Those people are uh, uh, leading the leading authority of the field of addiction they actually says that addiction is a brain disease. So addiction has the ability to actually alter your brain altogether. And as a result, those who are addicted to anything, whether to substance, like hard drugs, may Allah protect us and our children, our loved Amen. ones, Amen. cocaine, heroin, or any, any, any types of drug, or alcohol, or anything like that, those people, may Allah protect us, they are not in control of their very action. Like they cannot control their will. They cannot, they cannot control what do they want to do in life. Uh, even though they don't want to, to participate in such activity, they cannot control themselves. They find themselves always going into that endless cycle. So this is addiction. Now what's pornography addiction? Now it's self-explanatory. Pornography are those images that are intended, produced, scripted, and intended for raising or uh, sexual pleasure or, or uh, arousing people sexually. So some people, they go to these images thinking that they, it will enhance their sexual ability and it will enhance their sexual fantasy, only to uh, end up uh, hating it so much, not finding pleasure in it so much, yet they keep on going to it again and again. That's basically what pornography uh, addiction. Actually, the experts in the field have defined pornography of today in 2020 as illegal because what's, what's happening on pornography or on pornogra pornographic websites these days are horrific. Uh, there is, there is a degree, degradation of women slapping, pulling the hairs, spitting, calling them names, uh, child pornography, is on the rise and all these things are considered uh, illegal yet unfortunately uh, we, we find less support from organizations and and some governments uh, in in tackling this issue so pornography addiction in brief is uh, being being controlled and finding craving for some nudity uh, on the internet today and you can't get rid of it 
Well, definitely what I can like literally say about these kind of corporates is that they really take advantage of such addictions and the human brain, even the marketing world today, they always think about the psychological response of each and every consumer. So uh, I have a lot of calls every now and then, uh, brothers in, fa in faith and even non-Muslims, they would say that they totally agree with what you said is stated, Mr. Well, is that they literally do not feel the pleasure anymore, but still they would visit these websites and they, it's like a trend now, it's like a daily habit. So it's something in which they psychologically integrate in their daily lives and they don't know that they're getting consumed. They're not the consumers anymore. They are the ones being consumed by the pornograph pornographic addiction. Don't you agree? Uh, absolutely. And, and this is very, very good. You put it, you put it very, very well. Uh, and, and the problem with that is that not only do you don't find pleasure anymore, uh, in pornography, but one of the traits of, of, of addiction uh, is escalation. So they will not actually be pleased with a certain type, so they start escalating the doses, just like how you consume uh, and become addicted to drugs. You take uh, one cigarette, after a week you want uh, five, and then a pack a day, and then you become addicted to nicotine and cigarettes. And same to every other uh, substance or any behavior uh, for that matter. And uh, some people, that, so many of my clients actually, they, they, they fall into zina. And uh, some of them are religious. Some of them are really committed Muslims. But I, and, and I wanted to pause here for a while and, and, and send a message to everyone who's watching us that that does not mean that those people are perverted. It does not mean that they are hypocrites. It means that addiction is something very, very compelling and subhanAllah, like you, how could I, I, when I started studying this, I, my mind was, was like, you know, going everywhere because I, I thought that pornography consumers would be only among those who are perverted, bad people. We look at, at those people who engage in these activities as, you know, sinners, as not really well-mannered and so on and so forth. But it turned out that pornography does not discriminate. Pornography hacks everyone, every age, does not know Muslims or non-Muslims, does not know religious from non-religious, does not know children from adults. It attacks and it ruins the lives of every single individual. May Allah protect us all, Mr. Wa Indeed, it is a very scary thing to see that as believers, we don't have to be perverted or disgusting in order to fall into sin. Sometimes a person, yes, they would anger Allah, but Allah does not close the doors of repentance to them and still accepts their actions if they but repent. With your permission, Mr. Well, we are just going to have a short break and we'll come back, inshallah, and we have to discuss this matter thoroughly, God willing. Brothers and sisters, with your permission, we're going to be having a small break and we'll be right back. Please stay tuned and stay pious. <laughs> Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I hope you enjoyed your break. Now, just a minor recap, brothers and sisters. We were talking with Mr. Wael Ibrahim, who is the co-founder of Wael Academy. And mashallah, he really tackled the points of identifying both terminologically and the understanding, the common word understanding of addiction, especially pornographic addiction. Now, inshallah, we're going to be talking about a little bit more accurate numbers, which may seem shocking because in the end, we're all in it together. We're not saying that the idea of being an expert in pornographic addiction and to resolve it or to speak on that television on these matters that it should be discreet no it's an open topic we need to speak to our children we need to make sure that each and everyone receives the attention they could get in order to abstain from such haram things and may Allah protect us all now we will get back to Mr. Wael Ibrahim Assalamu alaikum Mr. Wael thank you very much for your patience Wa alaykum salam, Habibi. Jazakumullah khairan. I, I forgot to yani, thank you in the beginning for the invitation in uh, Huda TV. May Allah protect you and uh, all the people working behind uh, the scene. Today is the first time, like, you know, I, I, I love, of course, all the presenters and the mashayikh who appear on Huda TV, but today is the first time that I interacted with the people behind 
this iman they are equally uh, loving people may allah protect you all your MashaAllah, may Allah bless you, brother, and we are more than honored and we ask Allah to gather us all in paradise. Allahumma ameen. Now, I want to share some uh, statistics with your permission, uh, Mr. Wa'il, and these numbers are really shocking, and may Allah bless you. Now, I understand I'm that uh, in, <laughs> in 2019 alone, there was a count of 42 billion um, visits on pornographic websites or on a particular website, to be more accurate. And not only that, that was only in 2019 alone, which equi is equivalent to 115 million visits per day. And not only that, that there's also 25% of terminological searches via Google or any kind of search engines that is related to adult content. And what is even more strange is that 35% of downloads are related to um, pornographic content. So when we look at the numbers, we see that there's a very high traffic. And when we see the search engines, we see that there's a very high interest. And when we see the downloads, we see that there's a very high level of commitment. And that is a very dangerous uh, result. Don't you agree? If you can have your personal intake on this one. Jazakallah khair for bringing this up. And this is this is this has been I've been monitoring that particular website because they themselves they issue a review every year telling the people and boasting about how many people have visited them every single year. And every year the number escalates and increases by the millions. So if you compare between 2019 and 2018, there has been 38 million visits on that particular website in 2018, 42 billion 2019, and God alone knows how many more billions will jump on the, onto that website in 2020, uh, in the year 2020. And I'm expecting a massive escalation, a massive increase, especially because the lockdown, during the lockdown, that particular website opened the premium account for free. Yeah, this is really shocking. Like they're very generous on this one, and it's just yes. so shocking. And how can? And that's how, yeah, that's yeah, that... sorry to cut you off. This is how they hook people because they know they know the psycholog the psychology of addiction. They know how it works. Once I give you that high end product, you would look at the cheap ones. You would always aim for the high, and they open it for a period of time, and then after that they tell you now it's time to pay. This is how they hook you up on, on their uh, products. And by the way, my, my brother, this is only one website we're talking about. 42 billion visits a year. This is only one website. Do you know how many websites of that nature exist today? By the millions. By the millions. And if we, if we requested from each of those websites to provide statistics, we would be like, you know, are, the, are people doing anything other than pornography? Like, are they doing anything else but pornography? Exactly, exactly, that's, which that's is a shocking true. number. <laughs> now, not only that, uh, Mr. Wael, with your permission. Now, uh, what I also found out is that each and every second, and this is a very weird uh, uh, amount of uh, money or capital that they're making per second, $3,042 uh, uh, per second is their profit. Imagine. Like they make a profit every second, $3,042. And I can't remember if this was based like uh, in the US or in the world alone, which is a very high number. Not only that, I also found that there is 116,000 uh, count of requests for child pornography uh, to all of these companies around the world, which is not only disgusting, but to what extent and the unethical nature they, they couldn't care less. They just want to make the money. That's it. And we're being consumed. Society is being consumed. That's why the AWARE Academy, uh, led by Dr. Mohammed Abdel Jawad of Egypt, from Egypt, uh, who started this idea, uh, I think, in uh, five or six years back, uh, he, he is stressing this point that we have to educate the masses, raise, raise awareness about the harmful impacts of pornography, to protect the coming generation. If my child is addicted at the age of eight, nine, and 10, because devices are now accessible and you know, uh, in, in every home, 
then by the age of 18 and 20, how would he ever be able to focus on his prayer? How would he ever focus and memorize Quran? How would he do all his ibadat? I get a lot of comments from my clients saying that as soon as I say Allahu Akbar in my prayer, I see pornography. I see oh, pornography. The flashbacks hits immediately after they say Allahu Akbar. They cannot focus anymore. Pornography, according to researchers, we'll discuss that in, in perhaps in later episodes. Uh, pornography could hack that most important part of the brain or one of the most important part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex that is, you know, uh, responsible for our motivation, for our uh, willpower, for our focus, for our memory, for our decision making. It shrink it physically. We will talk to some of the experts about this in details, but this is this is what porn industry is is promising people. But and we have to be alert and we have to be aware. It's good that you brought up the nature of bringing up uh, due to this idea that uh, Aware Academy was established. Because I wanted to ask you uh, a set of questions with your permission, uh, brother. Now, why? What made you choose this kind of expertise? And you know, even considering that here, especially in Egypt, for example, um, if like all of us guys sitting down, usually people with the beards, they will say that, you know, if I say something about pornography, they may look at me as if I've just performed taboo. And uh, it's kind of a very shameful thing to speak about. So it, it, from your perspective, with your permission, what made you choose this path, inshallah? Jazakallah. Now, first of all, anyone who thinks that pornography is a taboo, anyone, I think thinking, let's, let's not forget about anyone, like thinking about pornography being a taboo is a foolish thing. Because after, after just giving people the number now, uh, it's super prevalent. It's uh, almost in every home. Uh, experts says that uh, a time has come where the question whether my child will watch pornography or not doesn't exist anymore. The question should be rather, when is he going to access it? Because he will. Sooner or later, your child will stumble if we don't do the necessary you know, preparation, the necessary education, and so on. So back to your question, brother. Uh, why did I start this or why did I uh, become involved in, in raising awareness or, about porn addiction? Look, I, I was not born in a religious home. So I grew up uh, just a simple guy who was interested in music and other, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and forgive us all. But I was interested in a different, completely different lifestyle. And early in the 90s, that was my problem. And early in the 90s, the the accessibility to such content was difficult back in the days we have uh, vhs tapes which is uh, as big as it was as big as this book yes <laughs> and in order for you to watch that you have to make a big plan and yet people in my age at that time were also addicted to pornography magazines magazines to walk to, to to have a, a look at those uh, magazines were also a, a, a problem, problematic. You would either watch outside in the streets or you would come hiding it somewhere and so on and so forth. And then it hits me that, subhanAllah, an 18 years old uh, boy who met me in serving STEM team, this is an organization that we have established in Hong Kong in 2009 or 2010, who came after, alhamdulillah, my life has changed and I started, uh, you know, getting involved in da'wah and so on. And he said that he's thinking to commit suicide. And I was like leading that organization. Why would you do that? You're a Muslim and you're a young man. He said, because I've been addicted to pornography for many years, many years, 18 years old, addicted to pornography for many years. Then all those memories of the 90s came into my mind like, yeah, it impacted us back in the days, and now it's impacted, impacting people. I worked with this man, and that's, that's the boy. That's the main reason why I got into the study of pornography. Then when I started talking about it, I remember I was in Malaysia in one of the conferences, and I speak 20 minutes. I want just you to imagine this, 20 minutes in a conference that was attended by 1,500 people in Malaysia. 20 minutes speech about the harmful impact of pornography. That night alone, I was in my hotel room. I called the organizer. I told him that there are 320 emails in my, in my, in my inbox, people screaming for help, asking me to help them about their porn addiction. Ya Allah. That's why I dedicated, I dedicated my life to this study. 
May Allah accept your dedication and prove so even more beneficial to the entire Ummah for both Muslims and non-Muslims. Because as Muslims, we don't just want to rid for our own, uh, you know, like uh, religion. We also want to benefit society, the community, and to help them fight all forms of vice and so on. May Allah protect us all. Mr. Wa'il, indeed, we have benefited today from today's segment, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your actions and to protect us from all forms of harm, evil, and addictions as well. And inshallah, we will uh, journey together in upcoming uh, episodes, God willing. Thank you very much for your participation, Mr. Wa'il. Okay, well, uh, May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, as you, you can see together, alhamdulillah, we understood the terminological identification of porn addiction. We looked at the numbers, which was very shocking, and we cannot stress this anymore with seriousness. We need to abide together by the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu We need to understand how we can gradually and permanently resolve such issues so that we may please Allah in this world and in the hereafter. Brothers and sisters, thank you very much for your uh, participation today. And please join us in future episodes of Visual Addiction with our beloved Mr. Wa'il Ibrahim. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.